and welcome to this video all about how to add a binding to your quilt. In this video I'm going to show you how I attach the binding on one side by machine and then towards the end I'm going to show you four different stitch options for stitching the binding down by hand. But first before I even trim the quilt down I'm going to use a stitch length of about three to just stitch about an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the quilt and I'm doing this just to hold the layers in place. I'm not actually using a walking foot and my quilt is well basted and I didn't need to put the walking foot on, it's fine, but you might prefer to use your walking foot for this step. I find this extra step of just doing this simple stitching around the edge to be really worth it. It just holds everything in place so when you trim down the excess fabric afterwards, nothing's going to shift around and you get a nice clean edge ready to attach your binding. Next I measure each edge of my quilt and each edge measured 50 and a half inches. So times by four to give me the perimeter of the quilt and in total my quilt is 202 inches. Now I'm going to add 10 inches as a bit of wriggle room for joining the strips together and for any overlap that I will need. So I'm, I need 212 inches so I'm dividing it by 42 because that's the usable width of my fabric. So I need just over five strips, so I'm going to cut six strips. And I'm going to cut my strips at two and a half inches wide. Now I'm just cutting the selvages off my strips so that when I join them together, nothing's going to show through. I'm placing them right sides together at right angles and you can see that you get a square if you like by lining them up like that. So I'm going to then draw a diagonal line across that square that it forms and that's going to be my stitching line. Once sewn together I just trim that excess seam allowance right down to a quarter of an inch and then I can finger press it open here but I will press it open with an iron to keep all the seams nice and neat. Now the tip to remember here is to do everything the same as you join each one, keep it all the same way and then they'll all be identical and you won't get some seams going to the left and some going to the right. So just follow the steps, press it open and then fold it in half with the wrong sides facing and the raw edges together and press your binding and then it's ready to join onto your quilt. Next I place the binding open but lining up the raw edge part way down one side of the quilt and I'm just folding that top corner over and I've pinned it in place and what I'm going to do is sew using a quarter of an inch seam allowance from that top point down to about three inches down and then I'm going to fold the other edge of the binding over and carry on sewing through both layers. Now I'm doing this because it creates a little opening that you can put the tail of your binding into when you get right back to the beginning again and it will make sense when I get to that part. So I've sewn down by about two or three inches and then I am folding the top part over and carrying on there so it leaves an open space, an open little pocket. Now when you get to the corner you want to stop by about a quarter of an inch so that you can create a mitre corner. To do that fold the binding back at a right angle and then straighten it up and fold again so you're creating two folds there to line up those raw edges with the next side of your quilt and then put it back under the needle and keep stitching along using the quarter of an inch seam allowance. 
So I'll just show you that step again, just so that it's really clear. So when you get to the corner, you need to stop just a quarter of an inch away from that bottom edge. When you've done that, you can take your quilt out from under the needle, fold the binding back, create a bit of a crease to create that right angle, and then fold it back on itself again to line those raw edges up, and then carry on stitching. So now I'm back at the beginning and what I'm doing is making sure that there is an overlap of a couple of inches of the tail of my binding and that it's going to fit into that little opening that I left at the beginning. So it slots in really nicely and I make sure everything's lined up and everything's nice and neat and then I can stitch right to where I began. So here's what it looks like when it has been stitched down all the way around. There is a little gap with that opening but we can stitch that short later on and I think this way you get a really nice neat edge and you don't have all that messing around trying to join two pieces together. I quite like this method so that's what I choose. And this is the leftover binding that I had so not too much wasted. So the next step, and I think this is really important, is to press the binding and to press that seam and just get a nice crisp edge before folding it over and pressing it. I really think it's important to take the time to make sure you do press. I think it makes all of the difference and it's just going to really help the binding to fold over and be really neat. So it's worth not skipping this stage. So next step is to press the binding to the back and to fold those corners over and get a nice neat mitered edge. And I like to use the binding clips to hold everything in place and I'm lining up that folded edge with my stitching from the other side so that everything is nice and even. So now that everything is pressed and held in place with the clips, it's time to sew the binding in place on the back by hand. So first of all, I'm just going to show you this typical stitch that we would use to stitch the binding in place. I'm using it Invisifil thread because it barely shows up and that is a polyester thread. And I am just going to bury my tail and then I'm going to just do a simple whip stitch, catch stitch, like we would for a plique, to just catch the edge of the binding and make a tiny stitch into the backing. I'm not going all the way through, I'm just making really small stitches and they barely show up at all. So this is a really nice typical way to stitch the binding on. to the mitre corner I like to stitch this in place in the same way too so I just follow that diagonal fold just catching the fabric ever so slightly 
right near the edge and I just stitch up three or four stitches and then I bring my thread back down again to continue along the edge of the quilt. Next I'm going to show you some decorative stitch options and for those I'm using the Wonderful Fruity 12 weight thread and the Pony Certain Stitch needles that I talked about in my previous video. And first of all I'm going to show you how to do a herringbone stitch. So I've brought my thread up in the quilt and I'm going back a stitch length and I'm using the mark on the needle to help me get an even stitch every time. And these needles are so useful for that. And then I'm just going back up to just before my previous stitch and then going forward a stitch length. This creates a really lovely herringbone stitch which catches the edge of the binding and holds it down to the quilt. I'm making sure I don't go through to the other side as I do this and it gives a really lovely effect. The next stitch is a zigzag chain stitch and this gives a lovely loopy stitched effect, again just catching the edge of the binding and holding it to the quilt. So bring your thread up just a little bit away from the edge of the binding and then put your needle back down next to where you came up but just loop the working thread around your needle and pull and you will have created a chain. Now you need to put your needle back down next to where you just came up and then use that marking on the needle to size your stitch to come up again in the binding and do the same thing, loop the thread around to catch the chain. So the next stitch is called Fern Stitch and I'm demonstrating it with quite long stitch lengths here. I think if I was doing it again I would make them smaller. But it's a really nice simple stitch that just uses a combination of straight stitches which overlap the edge of the binding onto the quilt. To do this stitch, bring your thread up just a fraction of a way from the edge of the binding and go forward a stitch length but go up for where you want your diagonal stitch to end. Bring your needle back down to where you began and slide it forward into the quilt an equal distance away from the edge to match the top stitch and then bring your needle back to the beginning again and repeat. It's really simple and you can get a nice rhythm with this stitch. The next stitch is fly stitch and this one is super simple and it creates a really nice effect. I think this one is brilliant for beginners. If you're new to decorative stitching then definitely give this one a try. It's really simple, bring your thread up 
in the binding just away from the edge and remember if you want to mark your binding where you want to bring your thread up each time for any of these stitches then definitely use a marking pen then a stitch length away bring your needle down into the binding and out through the quilt remember not to go through to the other side of the quilt and again you can use the marking on the needle to help you get this nice and even and as you do that your working thread is underneath so you're just catching it with your thread on top and then you need to place the needle back down next to where you just came up and then slide it through back into the binding a stitch length away again and just repeat this and you get a lovely fly stitch which is another really nice quick and easy decorative stitch. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you've liked to see the different ideas for decorative stitches. I'm going to choose the herringbone stitch I think and secure my binding down all the way around with that one because that's my favourite one, I've really enjoyed doing that one. In my next video I'd really like to do a Q&A video so if you've got any questions at all about anything then please let me know in the comments below or send me them on Instagram, I'll put some posts up about that. So I'm collecting questions and I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching and a huge thank you to those supporting me through Patreon, through super thanks on my videos, through my online shop. Thank you ever so much and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.